Thank you for joining today. Uh, this is our fourth annual Wikipedia Asian Month Edit-a-thon. Um, this month, we're focusing on art schools in Asia, and I'll talk a little bit about why later on um, this afternoon during the tutorial. Um, but for now, I just wanted to welcome you all and to say that this uh, event is being co-hosted with the organization Panja Genkan, um, which the founder or co-founder of Panja Genkan is here, Reiko Tomi. Um, thank you, Reiko. Uh, and the reason that we're co-hosting this event with uh, Panja is because we've um, been working with Panja over the last year plus on the Panja Wikipedia initiative, um, which is a um, initiative between AAA and Panja. Uh, it's a project that aims to address the imbalance of art historical information freely available online. Um, so over the last year, we've recruited and trained 12 fellows um, who uh, were to serve as Wikipedia editors in order to expand the number, length, and quality of articles on post-war and contemporary Japanese art on Wikipedia. Um, as I'm sure you all know, and this is part of the initiative that we're having today, one of the main, you know, Wikipedia has a major imbalance in terms of um, the uh, number of Eurocentric, Western-centric articles rather over, you know, articles from the rest of the world, basically, um, but particularly Asia. So that's one of the major goals of, Wik of the PWI project is to correct that imbalance. Um, and the goal of the first year of the initiative was to publish or substantially expand um, a total of 100 articles. Sorry, <laughs> working from home. Um, and uh, the as of October 2021, the 12 fellows have collectively added over 250,000 words um, and over 3,000 references to 75 English language articles. So we're more than three quarters of the way to our goal as of last month. Um, and I'm going to just drop into the chat. You can see the full results of PeeWee on our kind of tracking dashboard over the last year. Um, and uh, it's even being updated as we speak because um, the, uh, the fellows, the other 12 fellows are working on their articles over this weekend. Um, so I'm going to introduce several of the fellows from the PeeWee um, project to share their experiences, the articles that they've worked on, um, and their feelings about working with Wikipedia um, in just a moment. But one thing I do want to mention as well is that we're hoping to continue this project into the next year. Um, and so we're hoping to have a second round of PeeWee that will kick off in the first quarter of 2022. Um, and so look out for that open call, hopefully in January or February of next year. Um, and uh, then, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to um, one of our undergraduate fellows, Leah Motero, who's gonna share a little bit about the work that he's done through PeeWee and how it relates to his broader research interests. So Liam, I'll let you take it away. Great, thank you very much. Let me just screen share, hold on. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liam Otero, and I'm a research fellow with the Asia Art Archive in America in Panchagankan, and I'm an alumnus of Fordham University with an interest in modern and contemporary Japanese art history, particularly in relation to painting, photography, architecture, cinema, video, and moving image art. The purpose of this research fellowship is to increase public accessibility to post-1945 Japanese art history via Wikipedia. Given Wikipedia's reams of entries on post-1945 European and American art history, the number of entries on modern and contemporary Japanese artists is comparatively smaller. Over the course of this year, I have created new and expanded existing entries on understudied and underrepresented Japanese artists from the post-1945 period. While I will not be able to discuss all of my entries in great detail, I'll briefly note that my entries were of two different categories, new and revised. New entries were entries that previously did not exist on Wikipedia. Revised refers to existing entries on a specific subject that contained extremely limited and or inaccurate information. 
given the necessity to broaden Japanese art history. This is why I did not write about well-known established figures like Takashi Murakami, Yoko Ono, or Yayo Kusama, as their Wikipedia articles were quite expansive, well-structured, and richly informative. It was imperative for me to compose comprehensive entries that contained supremely detailed summaries. Wikipedia's presence compelled me to present my information in a coherently accessible manner, so maybe universally understood by diversified audiences, specialists, students, and the general public. I conducted exhaustive research that entailed copious time spent pouring through academic journals, theses and dissertations, arts and culture newsprint, exhibition reviews, scholastic databases, digital libraries, auction house lot descriptions, etc. In numerous instances, I encountered information gaps in which crucial content could not be readily obtained from simple internet searches. To remedy this issue, I contacted the press offices of museums and galleries, nonprofit organizations, and the artists themselves. As a researcher with access to the New York Public Library, I utilized their exceptional interlibrary loan services to request digitized scans of exhibition catalogs, out of print newspaper magazine articles, and book chapters that otherwise were unobtainable. Now, for those of you currently enrolled in a college or university, I strongly recommend that you consult your institution's interlibrary loan services in the acquisition of reliable resources. For the entries I will discuss, I displayed key pieces of information on their backgrounds, history, and significance as context for you. After each entry, I have a few slides that feature examples of their works as visual references. My decision to create a new entry on Ichiro Fukuzawa stemmed from my surprise that there was not already an existing one on him, considering he is the individual responsible for introducing surrealism to Japan's avant-garde art communities in the 1930s. Beginning research on this entry in late February, early March, I found that a major Fukuzawa retrospective was held at the National Museum of Modern Art Tokyo in 2019, entitled Laugh Off This Hopeless World, and it featured over 100 of his paintings. As an art historian, I have an academic interest in both the life of an artist and the distinctiveness of their style. Since the breadth of works on view demonstrated Fukuzawa's stylistic evolution, it was the perfect opportunity for me to assess the changes in his style over multiple decades. However, online photos of the works were limited and the exhibition closed two years ago. My only option was to obtain a checklist, which is a spreadsheet that contains every artwork on view in an exhibition, along with their attributes. So take, for example, the title, dimensions, medium, lender details, etc. I contacted the press office to inquire about securing one, and I was fortunate enough to receive a response from Shogo Otani, the chief curator of the museum and the individual who conceived this retrospective. Mr. Otani supplied me with more than I originally asked for, as he emailed me the checklist and scan pages from the exhibition catalog that revealed crucial content on Fukuzawa's stylistic influences, particularly when he traveled to the United States, Mexico, and Europe. Before I move on to the next artist, these are just a few examples of his oil on canvas and acrylic on canvas paintings. And these were all on view in that exhibition, uh, Laugh Off This Hopeless World. As both a Japanophile and a cinephile, Koei Ando was one of only a few filmmakers on the list, and I absolutely had to pick him. Similar to Fukuzawa, Wikipedia did not have an existing entry on Ando. Koei Ando is an experimental filmmaker and video artist whose career spans over five decades. As a pioneering figure in the rise of video art in the 1960s and 70s, his early films revealed the creative possibilities of utilizing television and video recording technology for purely artistic expression. Moreover, each of his films exhibit distinct narrative structures and visual designs that are markedly different from one another, from the employment of abstract imagery to storylines grounded in magical realism. Collaborative Cataloging Japan a Philadelphia-based nonprofit that specializes in the preservation of Japanese moving image art from the 1950s to the 1980s was a phenomenal resource that contained myriad articles and essays that provided either valuable biographical content on Koyando or pertinent historical context on video art in Japan. Anadachi Tosh, the CCJ's director, 
responded to all of my questions and put me in direct contact with Mr. Ando himself. For several months, Mr. Ando and I engaged in recurring email exchanges to which he provided textual and image resources that were not found anywhere else on the internet, specifically retrospectives, prestigious awards he acquired, complete filmography, and books he wrote and translated, including Japanese editions of Sidfield's book on the craft of screenwriting. And these are still images I took from each of his films over the years, 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter HD TV films. Founded by the esteemed fog sculptor Fujiko Nakaya, SCAN was a female run commercial art gallery situated in Tokyo's Harajuku neighborhood and is best known as Japan's first art gallery exclusively dedicated to the preservation, promotion, and exhibition of video art. Inspired by my work on Ando, I chose to compose a new entry on SCAN on account of the fact that there is a dearth in public resources on video art, the relatively recent medium of video art, especially within the realm of Japanese art history. Moreover, the overshadowing of female artists in both the Western and Eastern art history canons is a systemic issue that needs to be rectified. Research on SCAN proved to be a unique challenge. In large part, this is due to the name of the gallery. A simple search results for video gallery SCAN only yielded me pages that had absolutely nothing to do with the topic, but instead focused on uh, scanning technology for the latest iPhone or digitizing exhibitions for galleries in general. Since today's edathon is focused on Asian art schools, do be on the lookout for potential research hurdles if the name of your topic produces results that are completely unrelated to it. Because of the broad scope of SCAN's programming, exhibitions, and influence in the Japanese and international art worlds, there were multiple individuals and organizations with whom I consulted for primary and secondary sources, to which I'll discuss a few of them. The American video artist Bill Viola has been a friend of Nakaya's for 40 years, and I contacted his Los Angeles studio to learn in which exhibitions he was involved. Gene Zazaro, a representative, swiftly responded to my inquiry and responded by sending me scans of the original press release of Viola's 1980 solo exhibition, Bill Viola Selected Work 1976 to 1980. Scan played an instrumental role in connecting the Japanese video art scene with that of the Australian video art scene as the gallery hosted Continuum 83, Australian artists in Japan in 1983 as part of a transcultural exchange. As the first exhibition of contemporary Australian art in Japan, the show proved immensely successful. To learn more about the significance of this momentous show, I attained a number of resources on the exhibited artists and their works from two digital archives, Australian Video Art Archive oops, and Scanlines, Media Art in Australia since the 1960s. Through these sources, I came into contact with one of the participants, Dr. Jill Scott, a media artist and professor at Zurich Uni University of the Arts in Switzerland, who generously wrote detailed responses to my questions on her work in the exhibition and that of her fellow exhibitors. And John Patterson, the senior records officer of the Australia Council for the Arts, directed me to ancillary records and textual sources that provided more context on the lasting impacts of Continuum 83 on Japanese and Australian cultural relations. And unlike the previous slides, these are examples of works by artists who exhibited at Video Gallery Scan from 1980 to 1992. Individuals like Bill Viola, Joel Scott, uh, Mao Kawaguchi, also collectives as well. I should mention Visual Brains, Dumb Type as a few examples. As a Wikipedia user, the benefits of this platform far outweigh the challenges. One can input their content and have it instantaneously published onto the database. This was especially remarkable when I completed a new entry on subjects previously not listed on the site, such as the ones I spoke about, among others. The platform's tools permit one to connect their article to affiliate pages and are listed under categories to increase its reach and notability. For example, after I published Koei Ando, I attached multiple categories that would ensure his placement within broad topics like Japanese filmmakers, and more niche areas like Waseda University faculty. He was a professor there. The strength of my references was, was of the utmost importance because I wanted readers to be directed to additional materials that would elucidate the content I provided. 
Scroll down to the references section on any Wikipedia page, and you will find that website links are usually included as a way to guide readers to the original source for further reading. It is easy to encounter challenges that hinder one's research and writing, though. Thankfully, these difficulties prove to be minor, but should be mentioned for those of you participating today. Wikipedia's permittance of public editors allows anyone to contribute content on any topic. However, this does come at an expense where individuals may delete, revise, or completely alter your writing. The existence of the View History tab permits you to see which information has been modified should you need to reinsert or rewrite it. When publishing a new article or revisions, always assume that Wikipedia users from anywhere in the world are on the alert for changes in an article, no matter how obscure you perceive it to be. A user might immediately flag the content as unsubstantiated or the insertion of specific images as violations of Wikimedia's terms, Wikimedia, not Wikipedia, just to make that difference. And lastly, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has presented some challenges to the research process that either slowed or stymied parts of my writing. When it came to interlibrary loan, there were instances in which my article requests could not be immediately fulfilled and took several weeks or months to access them. Now, before I conclude, I just would like to take a moment to thank my supervisors, Ms. Hilary Chasse, Dr. Rico Tomi, and the entire fellowship editorial committee for their guidance, suggestions, and support over the course of this entire year. And I would like to extend my gratitude to my former professor, academic advisor, and colleague, Dr. Asato Akita at my alma mater, Fordham University, for informing me about this fellowship last fall and for continually strengthening my resolve to pursue Japanese art and for the continued support I've received from my professors in the Foreign Department of Art History. Thank you, and I wish you all so much success in today's public edit a thon. Thank you, Liam. That was wonderful. And we are going to go now to our next fellow, uh, Keenan Jay, who recently graduated uh, with a master's from the uh, University of Chicago, right, Keenan? <laughs> yes, I always get which school there is um, which. So let me spotlight you. And I'm going to now stop. So hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. And thank you to Liam for that wonderful presentation. Um, I am Keenan Jay. I graduated, as Hillary mentioned, from the master's program in the humanities at the University of Chicago this uh, past academic year. And um, I also was a Pee Wee Fellow this year. And actually, the first time that I ever edited a Wikipedia article was at the same event one year ago. So at the 2020 Wikipedia Thon um, for the Asian Art History. Uh, event as well. And um, yeah, so I just want to talk a little bit about the benefits of or what I found to be the benefits of working on Wikipedia. And um, yeah, I'd never worked uh, on the platform before and knowing it really uh, changed my relationship to Wikipedia, um, both the way I, in the way I do research, but also in how I read the articles a bit more critically now, which I found to be uh, really helpful. And uh, Wikipedia is obviously such an enormous and um, yet, yeah, I guess, ubiquitous tool for everyone. So that, that this information gets out for uh, a wider public is very important. Um, a big part of Peewee for me and working on Wikipedia in general has been knowing or discovering the limits of my own knowledge with regard to post-war Japanese art, which has been really, really fruitful. Um, cause I kind of came into the, to the fellowship, you know, knowing or thinking that I knew a little bit about post-war Japanese art, but of course you, you always know less, um, than you think, you know, so it's been really great to learn about all the different artists and to see the works that, uh, the articles that my peers in the fellowship have been publishing. And, um, so, uh, the way I approach the fellowship, and this is the list of articles here um, that I wound up publishing thus far. And if you're familiar with these artists, you may recognize that uh, it's a fairly eclectic group of artists actually, that they don't necessarily belong to any one movement or any one medium. And, um, so that's been one of the great joys of this fellowship and working on Wikipedia is 
working discursively through post-war Japanese art and kind of discovering artists through their connections to one another uh, and being able to expand my knowledge um, uh, in that way. Um, so next slide. So this is one of the articles that I wrote on, uh, or that I wrote or edited rather, uh, which is uh, Hikosaka Naoyoshi, who um, is a pioneering conceptual artist in Japan and um, also one of the central members of the Kyoto, uh, the student activist group at Tama Art University. And um, this is him doing his floor event uh, piece. And uh, so this was an endeavor of the Kyoto to bring exhibitions outside of institutions, official institutions. So this piece was done in his own home where he uh, poured latex then, which was then a very new material. He poured this latex all over the floor and allowed it to dry and uh, harden, I guess, over the, the course of a few days, photographing the process. And then at the end, uh, peeling the latex away as to leave the space as it was before the event. Um, so just to talk a bit about how this was a kind of discursive research uh, process. So the person who pressed the shutter for these photographs and uh, a pretty important interlocutor for Hitosaka was Yasuna Otone, who now lives in New York and is uh, the article that I'm working on right now. So uh, it kind of started with an interest in conceptual art, generally speaking, and then wanting to know more about Japanese conceptual art. And that led me to Hitosaka and uh, his relationship with Tone uh, now is leading in this other direction, um, studying the work of Tone and his uh, biography. So uh, Tone is, I guess, if you can go to the next image, please. Tone is mostly known um, in the US as a sound artist. Uh, although as I've been discovering through my research, he really uh, engaged in all sorts of activities not just exclusive to sound. Um, so it's been a great joy to learn about his work. Um, and this is a photo of him uh, performing voice and phenomenon with Suzanne Fletcher here in New York. Um, yeah, so just that discursive process has been really great, uh, a great way for me to expand my knowledge. Um, and also writing these articles has been a really great way to digest the information um, in a much more meaningful and much more, I think, permanent way than if I, if you were to just encounter it on Wikipedia or reading it. So uh, that's another one of the great benefits of working on Wikipedia and participating in events like this and uh, hopefully in the uh, fellowship as well. Next slide. One of the other really great things about the fellowship is, uh, has been how it's helped my own independent research. So um, simultaneous to doing the fellowship, I was also conducting research of my own on an artist named um, Hirokazu Kosaka. And he is a Los Angeles based artist uh, who was uh, born in um, the Kansai area. And um, he, in my interviews with him, he would mention Shimamoto Shozo, who's a Gutai artist and someone who I didn't really know much about, although I knew you know, a little bit about Gutai, I didn't know um, nearly enough um, to really uh, be familiar with Shimamoto's work. So I decided to write his, uh, or edit his Wikipedia article. And uh, through that process, uh, greatly improved the, my own research on Hirokazu Kosaka. So this is a piece, a pretty a landmark piece for Gutai art, Please Walk On Here, which was 1956. And as it turns out, uh, Hirokazu, or rather Kosaka, uh, saw this piece in person as a child. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you'll see that it, uh, there's a pretty strong resemblance to a lot of the works that he did in the 1970s, which was the, the work that I was focusing on in my own independent research. So this piece on the left, uh, similar to Please Walk On Here, which is this kind of uh, unstable pathway on which the, invited, the viewer was invited to uh, 
traverse from one end to the other, uh, paired with another more stable contrasting walkway. Um, but there's a similar kind of experience at work here in Kosaka's work, where there's this uh, jumble of shoes that the uh, participant or viewer was invited to walk across. Um, and this piece was actually inspired by the photographs of the shoes left behind at the concentration camps uh, during the Holocaust. So the idea being that by walking across these shoes, uh, you have this bodily uh, somatic experience with the materiality of history. Uh, but you, you uh, experience the mass of people who were, uh, um, you know, tragically murdered at the concentration camps. And then this other piece on the right here, this is actually a scan from a, a article in Avalanche magazine, which was sort of an important, more conceptual art focused magazine um, here in the US. Uh, this features a, a piece by Kosaka called Five Hour Run which was 1972, in which he ran for five hours in the gallery space. And uh, Kosaka, in my conversations with him, noted that this was meant as a kind of purification ritual um, for the show that was to follow in that same gallery, which, as it turns out, was a Shimamoto Shozo exhibition in Los Angeles. Um, so, yeah, I think... I think that's the last slide actually, but I, yeah, I just want to talk also quickly about um, how great Pee Wee has been just as a community of scholars, both emerging and established, and to be able to engage with um, different people who are interested in post-war Japanese art and uh, to uh, gain from their expertise and their own interests. And uh, I've had the opportunity to meet a few of the other fellows in person, which has been really great. Um, not all of them, unfortunately, but uh, I hope to continue this work and expand this community uh, moving forward. So that is all. Thank you so much, Keenan. That was wonderful. Um, and it's great to know that you, I think I remember, I remember you were here last year for this edit-a-thon and I believe Tomas was also here last year for this edit-a-thon so it feels very fitting to have you both be presenting today. Um, so uh, let me then spotlight Tomas and Tomas take it away. Thank you Hilary and thank you Liam and Kinan for your very interesting presentations. Uh, let me just share my screen. Here we go. So good afternoon everyone my name is Thomas Vautier. Uh, I am French, uh, so I hope you will bear with my imperfect English. Uh, I am currently in the third year of my thesis at the University of Aix-Marseille in France and will soon be a research student at the Tokyo University of the Arts under the Mumbukaga Kusho Scholarship. My doctoral thesis uh, research is entitled Japanese Revitalization Art Practices Since 1990, Mediating and Remedying Disasters. I am interested in contemporary Japanese art practices working in post-disaster context, 1995 and 2011, and the development of art projects and art festivals in Japan in their attempt to counteract the demographic crisis and the resulting spatial inequalities. I discovered last year the call for the call for participation launched by Punjab and Con and Asia Art Archive because of my interest for both institutions. I have been following Rehei Kotomi's research for a while, and the resources offered by Asia Art Archive are an important source for my research. So I decided to apply after the first Wikipedia editor son that was organized in November last year. I hope that your current experience will be as enriching as mine, and that you will also participate in this beautiful adventure. At the beginning, we had the benefit of, the, of a preparation session co-host by Reiko Tomi and Hilary Chassé, who explained to us how Wikipedia works and the rules of writing, especially on the usable resources, the degree of objectivity to be respected, and formatting. They also provided us with multiple resources, from tutorials to a collection of the existing literature on our potential article topics. A list of artists and movement was offered to us, to which we could also suggest others. 
We were continually, <clears throat> we were continually accompanied by the duo Reiko and Hilary, who proved to be very complementary in their outlook. They indeed updated us with what constitutes the main areas of this Peewee project, both on the formal writing of our articles in order to correspond to the expectations of Wikipedia, and with specific advice on the relevance of our sources and our conceptual choices on the most relevant information to select. For my part, I chose artists and movements of the Hange Jutsu movement, the anti-art tendency, which constitutes the genesis of the socially engaged artists that interest me in my doctoral corpus. I was thus able to write article on Neo Dada, Group Ongaku, Tatsumi Ijikata, Group Kyushu, and on one of the main places of experimental artistic expression at the time, the Sogetsu Art Center. On this last article, which required a lot of research, I collaborated with another fellow, Naomi Kuromiya, who supplemented my preliminary research and my first draft of the Wikipedia page with Japanese sources she had access to. Similarly, my article on the Neodada movement was contributed by another Wikipedia user who was not part of our Peewee fellow class. This show how Wikipedia is a place of co-creation, aiming at improving global knowledge through the sharing of sources and views. The practices of the 50s to 70s are currently receiving renewed interest for certain scholars, but remain little known to the general public. For me, working on this movement and artist collective was an opportunity to participate in their visibility in order to balance the often too Eurocentric vision that the history of art in general and, and of performance arts in particular manifests. The Neodada Collective has thus proposed since the year 1960, performances happening before the times, particularly remarkable and which can be considered as more directly socially engaged than the American counterparts, such as the Neodadaist Jasper Joan or Robert Rosenberg. Similarly, Group Ungaku proposed concerts, notably at the Sogetsu Art Center in Tokyo in 1961, using a wide variety of instruments, including everyday objects, such as a vacuum cleaner, dishes, or washboard, in a methodology of, of improvisation described as automatism. This performance precedes John Cage's visit to Japan in 1962, and from then on is recognized as a pioneering work in experimental music, paving the way for fluxus experiments that will follow. These two examples were the driving force behind my interest in these practices and my discoveries about their international contemporary, contemporaneity, excuse me, and even their antecedents in American European practices that are generally highly valued. In parallel with these anti-art practices, I was also interested in practices that I consider ecological, proto-anthropocenic, whether those of the conceptual photographer Itoshi Nomura or the installation artist of the Monoa group, Noriyuki Araguchi and Nobuo Sekine. In the Moon's Core series, Itoshi Nomura photographed the movement of the moon each night between December 1975 and June 1979. Each night constitutes 34 shots, as, as well as two images of a meteorological journal, including the date, the moon phase, moonrise, and moonset. These images are presented as black and white contact prints, as well as the large scale black and white prints. Each shot has been double exposed with several lines constituting a musical staff. Thus, some plates become musical scores, the moon materializing a musical note, and were interpreted by orchestras and become autonomous musical pieces. The work Oil Pool by, by Noyuki Araguchi includes oils in a low pool that serenely reflects its surroundings back at its viewer, developing a practice that engages with political and environmental issues through a kind of post-minimal vocabulary. At Nobu Sekine's first solo exhibition at Tokyo Gallery in 1969, he exhibited Face of Nothingness, oil clay, 
which consisted of a huge mass of oil clay exhibited in its natural state. Viewers were allowed to touch this work and reshape it, implying that sculpted or not, and in contrast with, to its dominant physical presence, this sculpture was transient. These three examples highlight the determining points of the Monoha artists in their exploration of the encounter between natural and industrial material, arranging them in mostly unaltered ephemeral phases. The optic is therefore quite different from other ecological art forms that appear in the 60s and 70s in Europe and the United States. The aesthetic detachment and renewal of matter in response to the imminent loss of the object is, is particularly strong in the Japanese post-war art practices. I will also write this very weekend my second to last article on the photographer Yuji Miyamoto. We will have a consequent place in my thesis because of his documentation of the 1995 earthquake in Kobe. He takes a sharp look at the phenomena of post-war urbanization in Japan while manifesting a vision of the disaster that is not spectacular or sensationalist, but a will to memorize that allows for the re-evaluation of the narrative, creative destruction proper to modern design. Thus, his photographs consist a visual archive that continues to be propped for new and enduring lessons of the great Anshinawaji earthquake. Finally, I also worked on an artist who is close to me, a friend actually, Tsuneko Tanyushi, who uses performance as her main medium. Her practice, which oscillates between script situations and participatory works, aims to question cultural, social, and sexual constructions linked to notion of identity, immigration, and feminism. For example, since 2002, the year France adopted the Pax, allowing same-sex couples to embrace a form of, of union close to civil marriage, Tanyushi has developed a new series called Micro Events Weddings. Our aim is to question, through a variety of contexts, the social norms surrounding marriage. To this, day, to this date, she has married more than 290 people, men, women, all sexes and genders, and sometimes with several people at once. I have been able to work with her and I've also recently done an interview with her that will enhance the Wikipedia page I have already written on her. This highlights for me several characteristics of Wikipedia and this Peewee project. Increase the visibility of more or less marginal artistic practices, co-creation and the forever evolving process. To conclude, I would say that I found this project particularly relevant to, my, to the writing of my thesis. On the one hand, because it redoubles the paracuratorial character of a thesis, namely the gesture of making visible artists and practices for my part socially engaged, and of arranging them in a logical order that tries to be relevant, as I try to do for this presentation. And on the other hand, the mode of sharing offered by the Wikipedia platform is a very interesting counterpart to the thesis work, which is usually aimed at specialists. Here we can hope to reach a larger audience by getting out of a kind of ghettoization of the usual scientific networks. This seems so important to me that I think it would be interesting if universities and other research places could set up the same kind of program, allowing a scholar to free up a space of their time and a remuneration to share publicly one research. So thanks again to Hilary and Reiko for their extremely relevant initiative and their continuous support, and more generally to Asia Art Archive and PunjagenCon for making this adventure possible. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you so much, Thomas. That was wonderful as well. Wow, what um, three very, you know, different, but um, very well thought out presentations all of the fellows gave. So I hope um, those overviews from each of them kind of gave 
um, those in the audience an insight into the Wikipedia editing process and the research process and how much really does need to go into, um, you know, creating new articles out of whole cloth. There's a ton of research that does need to happen, but um, I also hope you're not intimidated because you can definitely start slower and ease your way into things. Um, so uh, to kind of wrap up the Pee Wee section again, just want to say that we are hoping to continue this multi-year project um, moving beyond what the fellows in 2021 have been able to do, which again, as of now, is create or edit in major ways over 75 um, articles, uh, adding over 250,000 words to Wikipedia, which is just really an astonishing accomplishment. Um, so we want to keep that momentum going into 2022. Uh, so if you're interested, after hearing a little bit more about the details of the fellowship and applying, or you know someone who would be, tell them to keep an eye out for the open call um, going out, hopefully in early 2022. Um, and you feel free to reach out to me um, or to Reiko through Ponjig and Khan if you have any questions about that. <laughs>